What's up, guys? You're listening to Stay Uncomfortable. My name is Kaivin, and I'm your host. Stay Uncomfortable is all about the mindset. It's about how do you become a better version of yourself. It's about how do you do the things that you don't want to, but you know that you have to do them in order for you to get to where you need to. Remember, nothing is impossible. You can have anything you want in life. It's going to require hard work. It's going to require you to show up every single day, and it's going to put you in very uncomfortable places that's where magic happens remember this is where growth happens welcome to the show all right and welcome back to another episode of staying uncomfortable and to our new listeners welcome 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 to this show in today's episode we're talking about what separates all of us we all have different views on and which is how strong is our mental game yeah, if you can win the game in your mind, you can win at life. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and I think that's what separates all of us, right? We all have different way when it comes to lifting weights physically. But what separates us is mental game. Like how you think versus how I think and how what my values are and what I'm able to do. Yeah, the winner at the top is the one with the strongest mental game. Yeah, so let's dive right in. Yeah, so let's look at the 10 things you must do to be mentally strong. Right. And number one, no complaints and no excuses. Damn right. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to stop complaining. You got to stop saying the shit that is draining the shit out of you. Yeah. And if you think about the friend of yours that's always complaining, that's always making excuses, you don't want to be around them. Right. I mean, sure, they're your friend. You love them. But it's like, think about if you're doing this. <laughs> exactly. You need to stop doing this right now. If you want to be mentally strong, there's no excuses. Yep. There's no complaints. And how do you do this? You think about what you can control and what you can't control. If you can control it, great. Change it. If you can't control it, change the way you think about it. So one of the best examples is the past, right? Think yeah. about how many people talk about the past, this baggage that we all have, right? It's like you can't control it, which brings us to our second point, yep. investing energy in the present. Absolutely right. As, as G said, like, I think we spend so much time worrying about the past and so much predicting in the future. All you got to do is really spend the energy into now what's happening in your life now, where you are in your life right now. Really get focused and serious on that part of your life. Yeah. When you think about when we were kids, right, when we used to be, you know, in the zone, right? Which is called the flow state now, Yep. right? When you have no concept of time, you're just having so much fun. You realize, wow, it's been eight hours and I haven't eaten. I haven't had any water. Mom's yelling, right? <laughs> Out of the balcony, like come home. home. <laughs> and how can you replicate that as adults? What can we do? And that in itself will help you find your life purpose. What do you get completely yeah. lost in doing and what calls to your soul? Like, if you think about it, right, like you're not, maybe I'm not, but I am not excited when it comes to doing dishes. It's not like I'm getting, all right, it's time to do dishes. Let's go, everybody. No, I'm not, right? But when you tell me, hey, man, I have this idea, I'm like, dude, here you go. Step one, step two, step three, step four, right? So find what you get so excited about, and it will tell you what your purpose in life is. High priority. Will you get excited to do what's your high priority work ethics? Yeah. And at that point, you're going to find something that you enjoy doing and that may or may not resonate with other people. And that's our point number three, which is pleasing others. Oh, man. I, I mean, I, I can speak from my experience since I wasn't born here and I came from India not knowing how to speak English. Like I had to do a lot of pleasing. And I remember, man, like it just like got to a point where I was just like, dude, like this motherfucker doesn't even care doesn't matter how much energy and how much time I put into this, like they don't even care. So like at that point, I realized that, dude, like I got to stop pleasing everybody else. And I just got to start focusing on myself. Yeah. And if you think about every decision that you're making in life, a handful of people actually care and approve of your decision. There's a handful of people that don't approve Mm -hmm. of your decision. And there's the majority of people that don't even care about what decisions you're making in life. So there's no point. You just got to move forward. What makes you happy? You follow your bliss. Yeah. Follow your heart. Your heart knows a lot more than you think it does. 
Just follow that and it'll lead you into the right direction. And that brings us to our next point, willing to fail. Yeah, as you keep trying something, as you try something new, and one great example you used, Kaivin, was like, you're not going to wake up playing guitar like Elvis, especially if you've never played the guitar before, right? You're not going to get the chords right. You're not going to understand the strings. You're going to hurt your fingers. You're going to get calluses. You're going to fail from time to time. But that word has such a negative connotation in our society. It's not fail. It's like, one, it's a learning experience. Two, you just know a way that it doesn't work or it doesn't get you to what you consider success. Yeah. Right? No, definitely. I mean, the more you fail, the more you learn. And, you know, in my career, like I've had so many failure businesses, Mm -hmm. but that that hasn't stopped me because from every single failure, I've gained something new in an outlook way where it's just like, oh, I learned how to become a leader. Oh, I've learned how to hire the right people. I've learned how to look at the P&Ls, right? Like these are real life examples. And like if I didn't do any of those things, I wouldn't have learned and have the knowledge that I do today. I never look at anything as a failure. I always look at it as a great learning experience that kind of comes along with the business or a project that I'm working on. Yeah. And as children, again, it's the whole concept of crawl, walk and run, right? Yeah. If a child is learning how to crawl and if they fall over, they don't just give up, (laughs) right? They know that they need to get to a point where they want to walk. They'll keep trying. And then how many times do they fall when they walk? They don't give up. No. And then when they're walking, they're going to start running and they're going to fall at that and they're going to fail. And they don't give up. So it's the same concept. When you learn something new, you are going to fail. And again, change that word. Let's reframe it. It's not failure. It's learning experience. And it's just something that didn't work. And I know that anybody that's listening out there, I know you're good at something so well. Ask yourself what you're really good at. And can you turn that passion or hobby into your full-time gig or even to your side hustle? Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you that there are so many people who are looking to learn different things. And if you can help other people learn those things, you become so valuable to them. Yeah. And I want to buy something, let's say a wedding cake or whatever cake. I don't know why I use wedding cake as an example, but you're still single. (laughs) (laughs) My mind. I want to buy a cake from somebody who had so much passion going into making that cake, right? I don't want to buy a cake from somebody. I'm looking at, they're just so bored making that cake and so unhappy making that cake. I mean, we could use examples of how our clothes are made, things like that. But when you think about passion, when somebody does it with passion, you're attracted towards that or towards that product that's being built with passion. So that brings us to our next point, right? Point number five, when you're passionate about something, you're going to have to spend time alone. You're going to have to figure out who you are, what you want to be, how you're going to get there. And a lot of times, Kevin, one of the things that you talked about is when you're alone, You have demons within you, the demon that tells you to sleep a little longer, the demon that tells you to order pizza when you're trying to get in good shape. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think when you really, you have to learn to spend time alone, that's for sure. Because once you realize that, you realize like how much power you have within yourself. And especially when it comes to fighting those bad demons, because we always say there's always tomorrow, Mm -hmm. but then tomorrow's not guaranteed, right? Mm -hmm. So how can you actually start spending time by yourself and start learning the things that you need to do when it comes to really getting whatever you want in life, right? And the other great example that I'll give you in here is that when you're spending time alone, you realize shit that you like and the shit that you don't like. Yeah. But it comes with time. Obviously, the first time you spend time alone, you're like, okay, what do I do? Like, It's going to take time to get to know yourself. But once you do... There's no influence. There's no pressure. All of that stuff goes away, guys. Yeah. And once you start, that brings us to our next point, which is willing to be able to put the work in. Yeah. Because the world does not owe you anything. Absolutely right. Nobody owes you anything. And as you said, there are only two people in this world that might as well give you because it's their love and because they brought you into this world is your fucking parents. Nobody else owes you jack shit because everybody else is busy chasing and running after what they want in life. So don't expect anything from anybody. Yeah. You got to do you, you've got to focus on you. And as you start your journey towards following whatever passion you have, you must understand that you're not going to get immediate results. So we talked about failure and the persistence of, of wanting to keep going, 
but then the patience, and we'll use the Les Brown example in a little bit, yeah. but let's talk about patience and let's talk about how this world is such an instant world and instant gratification and just microwave that, that just does everything for you. Yeah, no, you, you said something great about the microwave. I'd love for you to share that example that you shared with me to, with the listeners. Go ahead. Yeah, so we're a microwave society now, yeah. right? What I mean by that is, if you think about back in the day when you were hunting, when we were Neanderthals or when, you know, we didn't have this technology today, we used to have to gather sticks and coals and make fire. And then you go ahead and heat up something that you're going to eat. Mm -hmm. Now we open the microwave. You don't even have to do one, zero, zero. You just hit <laughs> express one and it's done yeah. in one minute. You Less buttons that are being clicked. And that's it. In one minute, this microwave society has something warm for you. Yeah. Patient is going to be key, guys, because it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So whatever you're trying to achieve, remember that it's the passion. You're in it for the long run. And shit's going to hit the fan many times. That's why it's very important that it needs to be your hobby or passion. Because therefore, at that point, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. And we'll dive in a little bit more on this topic because I feel like as millennials and really the newer generation, we're very impatient, right? Yeah. Let's talk about Instagram for a second. The word Instagram is instant, instant right? Yeah. So you think about that model that's taking this photo and you're admiring this model and going, wow, mm -hmm. look at that body, look at that shape. But guess what? It took two years. It took five years to build that body. The 4 a.m. runs, the 5 a.m. weightlifting. Yeah. That's why they look you know, beautiful to you. And that's why their body is sculpted in a way that's attractive to different brands. It, they didn't wake up like that. It was all the work that they put in. So that photo, that selfie that only took 10 seconds, it's actually five years of work. work that you don't see. Yep. And that's all they see, right? That's, that's all the society sees is like, oh, I want to be like that. But they don't see the work that's been put in days and nights over and over and over. The sacrifices, the food that you didn't eat, yeah. you know, the pizza that you avoided, right? All this stuff that you don't see. And then the last sort of example we'll use is what Les Brown says about the Chinese bamboo tree. Yeah. Right? This Chinese bamboo tree, you plant the seeds and you have to water them for five years every single day. Yep. And after five years, in two weeks, it grows 90 feet. So did it take five years to grow 90 feet or did it take two weeks to grow 90 feet? Obviously, the answer is five years. And people don't have that patience. People don't want to water their seeds every single day. And when they don't see results, they give up. Yeah, it's very easy to give up. And trust me, I, like I know that, right? Like we know that, like we started this in end of 2016 and early January of 2017. It's been two years of making. Two years, guys. And you're finally starting to notice us. We've been doing this for two years. All the foundation has been laid day by day, month by month. And now we're finally at a point where we can share this content with you. We're very excited to do so, but you should know this took two years and it may take another two, three years before we're at a different level. Yep. And, but we're okay. We're, we're going to put in the work. And then that brings us to our next shape. Point number nine, which is modify unhealthy supplementing beliefs. Yeah. And it's the I am's that you say to yourself, right? I'm not pretty. I'm not successful. I'm not good enough. What you said earlier, Kaivin, who are you comparing this to? Why are you saying that to yourself? Yep. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning and there's only you in this planet. Are you going to be like, I don't look like that. There's nobody else for you to compare yourself to. It's just you by yourself. I guarantee you, you're not going to say shit like that anymore. Yeah. Compare yourself to who you were last year, to who you were five years ago. And I hope most of you will say, wow, I have made so much progress in the last five years. And you'll feel good about that. If I give you an example and, you know, this will go into the, for an example, like point number 10, but like, I am so happy with my journey and especially where I'm at today. From not being able to speak English to being able to read, write and speak English, being able to be behind a mic and have a podcast, being able to be in front of TV and have a show. It's like, dude, I came from nothing and look at how far I've come. I'm completely happy with where I'm at today. So stop comparing yourself with other people, but compare yourself within yourself and see how progress you've made, how much in this journey you've come along. 
Yeah, and it's it's very tough to do because we do look at other people and see what they have and the whole comparing with the Joneses, right? Keeping up with the yeah. Joneses. But that's why the topic is what mentally strong people do and what you must do to be mentally strong. So stop comparing and really modify these unhealthy, self-limiting beliefs that you have. Yeah. And then this is very, I think, uh, for G and I, we talk about this a lot. And I think it also is part of our daily life, which is practicing gratitude. You know, we both have our different ways on when it comes to practicing gratitude. So for me, I usually carry a rock in my pocket. And the reason why I do that is because I'm not really good when it comes to writing down my gratitude or uh, feeling them. So for me, it's like every single time I touch the rock, um, I, I say, hey, I'm grateful for you know, being alive. I'm grateful for being able to go after my dreams. And I know you have your way as well. Yeah, for me, I just wake up and smile. Once my eyes are open, I'm just like, wow, I get another day today yeah. to go after my goals and to chase my goals and my dreams. So I just smile, even if I don't feel like smiling. And then just the fact that your body's smiling makes you in a better mood. So now I'm just, you know, I'm primed to have a great day. There's no way I'm not going to have a great day. So that's how I think. Thankful. And if I can eat a meal that day, right? Again, you're just thankful that you're able to eat because there's a lot of people that can't even do that. I'm, I'm thankful that I can walk to the train station. Thankful that I can sit on a train. I enjoy the journey of, you know, being on a train. Like how many people may have not been on a train in their lives, right? So there's so much to be thankful for. I feel like people forget. Yeah. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The 10 things you must do to be mentally strong. Remember, it's going to take time. It's a journey. So take it a step by step and make sure to be persistent and always show up. And it's going to be hard, but we believe in you. We're here with you. Till next time.